الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد My dear brothers and sisters The topic of today's uh, session is How to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for this purpose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, created us so that we can connect with Him where he said, "Aaud billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim, wa ma khalaqt al-jinna wal-insa illa liyabudu." Now, the uh, the grammar, the grammatical construct of that is a super emphasis. One is to say, "I created, we created the humans and the jinn to worship us." That's one way to say it. But Allah did not say it like that. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "We have not created the jinn and the ins for any purpose other than to worship us." We did not create the jinn and the ins illa liyabudu, except for our worship. So that is a far more stronger emphasis on the purpose of our creation. What is worship? Worship is to connect with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There is no concept of worship without connection. I mean, there is no. There are some things that need not be told. Right? There's something that need not be spoken. Uh, it is understood. We don't have to say, open your eyes and see. If you say you see, it is, how else do you see without opening your eyes? We don't have to say, you know, so, I mean, many things like this. So, similarly, worship means to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are not connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then where is the worship? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for this purpose. So, the first thing to remember and understand about connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jalla Jalalhu, is that the one who created you for a purpose will make that purpose easy for you to achieve. Because otherwise, it doesn't make sense. If that were not the case, it does not make sense. Allah creates you for a purpose and then He makes it difficult to achieve that purpose. Why would He do that? Anything which you create for a purpose, then you facilitate the fulfillment of that purpose. So, ibadah, is made easy. Ibadah is not difficult. So to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not difficult. So that is the first and foremost thing to keep in our minds to say that to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not difficult. It is easy. But why doesn't it happen? And we look at that inshallah and what to do to make it happen inshallah. So first thing to understand is it's easy. Allah made it made us for this purpose and therefore He made this purpose easy for us to achieve. Second thing to understand is that ta'alluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanting this ta'alluq to happen. So the ta'alluq with Allah, the connection with Allah is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Now ta'ala Allah wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over and above any misal that we might give. But for us to understand, take Friendships. I may want to be your friend and I may do a lot to try to be your friend. I may give gifts to you, I might spend time with you, I might be nice to you, I might do many things. But the friendship will not happen until you accept that. Yes? Our Urdu poetry is full of the non-acceptance of such friendships. Huh? So no matter what you do, the acceptance has to come from the other side. And so ta'alluq with Allah is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore what must we do? Persuade Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give this gift. Beg Allah. Beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this with respect to what to do and with respect to the fact that it is his gift. In Surah Al-Alaq, in the last part of the last ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَسْجُدْ وَقْتَرِبْ Now this ayah tells us how to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we understand this one piece of this ayah, which is just two words, وَسْجُدْ وَقْتَرِبْ And make sujood and come close. Make sujood and come close. If we understand these two words, then the rest of this lecture and the rest of everything else is unnecessary. If you understand these two words, you don't have to listen to this lecture, you don't have to do anything, just go do it. Wasjud waqtarib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, fall into sajda and come close to me. 
What is the meaning of fall into sajda and come close? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, stand up and come here. If Allah said, come running, come walking, we can understand. Allah is saying, fall into sujood and come. When you are in sujood, you cannot move. When you are in sujood, your face is on the ground, your knees are on the ground, your hands are on the ground, your feet are on the ground. You are completely and totally helpless because you can't even see. So if somebody wants to attack you when you are in sujood, it is very easy because you can't, you cannot see, you are, you, you are blind. That's the reason why <coughs> the sajda is, is haram to everyone except our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla. There is no sujood even of ta'azim in Islam. The sajda is only one kind of sajda which is the sajda of ibadah and that sujood of ibadah is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla. Because it is not the waqar of the human being to lower himself and to humble himself and to make himself helpless before anyone other than his creator. It is not the waqar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings as with, with creatures of waqar. But Allah is saying with respect to himself, Wasjud waqtarib. So how do you get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you cannot move? And this is where my understanding is that if you make sujood, Allah brings you close. The sajda is the final act of begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, Ya Allah, please accept me. And Allah accepts you and Allah brings you close. Now what is sajda? The physical sajda we know. <coughs> but what is sujood with respect to the other aspects, not just the physical body position? Sujood is the entire life of the Muslim. Sujood is the entire life of the Muslim. Sujood is the heart of the Muslim which is in total and complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla. Whatever Allah wants. وَإِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ His Rabb said to him, submit. What did he say? He did not say, I will submit. He said, I have submitted. أَسْلَمْ تُ I am already in submission. لِرَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ So the position of the Muslim of sujood is complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His heart is in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His thoughts are in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His will and his desire. What do you want? I want whatever you want. Now what is your desire? This is my desire. Ibrahim alayhi salam is in the, he's tied up and he's put into the cup of the catapult to be thrown into the fire. Jibreel A.S. comes to him and says, tell me what can I do? How can I help you? Jibreel A.S. says, I don't ask anyone except my Rabb. It's not an issue of fiqh. It's not an issue of jayas and not jayas. In any case, it is jayas to, uh, to tell somebody. I mean, if, uh, you know, if uh, Ali Abdullah tells me, uh, Shaykh, can I do something for you? I can tell you, it's not shirk. He's here in front of me. So if Ibrahim alayhi salam had told Jibreel, save me from this fire or something, it would be, alhamdulillah, nothing wrong with that. But there is a, there is a level and a level. There is a level between a normal person and a level between somebody who wants to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel alayhi salam says, what can I do? Tell me, how can I help you? And this is a huge, massive fire. The fire is so big that they can't, go, they can't even go close to the fire to, to throw Ibrahim alayhi salam. So the user siege engine, they use a uh, uh, trebuchet, they use a, ca a catapult to throw him inside. He says, I don't ask anyone except Allah. So Jibreel Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all of this. I mean, the, the malaika do not do anything of their own will. So Jibreel Islam comes to him, he's come with the mashiat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever we hear these hadiths and hear these stories, understand that when we say Allah asks this and Allah asks that, it's not because Allah wants to know. It is to establish the hujjat in favor of the slave. 
So Allah says, what did my slave say? So that on the day of judgment, Jibreel will be witness for the slave. Your slave said this. So Jibreel says, both to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Zal Jalali wa Likram, your Khalil is about to be burnt. I went to him and asked him, what can I do to help you? And he tells, he tells me that he, will, he doesn't ask anyone except you. Please do something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go back to him. Tell him I sent you. Tell him I sent you. And tell him I want to know what does he want from me. Eh? Allah knows already. He says, go and ask him. Tell him what does he want from me. Jibreel Islam comes to him and says, Ya Khalilullah, Ya Ibrahim, Ya Alayhimussalam, Your Rabb sent me. And your Rabb wants to know what do you want from him. Ibrahim Alayhi Salam says, My Rabb does not need to ask. Huh? So my Rabb does not need to ask. What do I want? I want whatever he wants. I want whatever he wants. Ibrahim Alayhi Salam removed all Azbab from between him and his Rabb. What do I want? Whatever my Rabb wants. Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. My Rabb does not need to ask. When the slave removed the Azbab from between himself and his Rabb, his Rabb removed the Azbab from between himself and his slave, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the fire directly. Kulna ya nar, kuni bardan wa salaman ala ibrahim. Allah did not say to Jibreel Islam, now go put out the fire. No. He didn't say catch, catch Ibrahim while he's flying in the air and take him away. No. My Khalil is talking to me directly. He has removed all the asbab. Allah removes all the asbab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa musabbibul asbab. Allah is not in need of asbab. Allah ordered the fire directly. Qulna, ya nar. We said to the fire, O oh fire, kuni bardan wa salaman. Become cold and become a source of safety. Ala Ibrahim. On Ibrahim. Not on the rope which is tied to Ibrahim alayhi salam. So the rope burnt. Ibrahim alayhi salam still didn't burn. He got free because the same fire burnt his rope. What were the people around him seeing? They were seeing the fire. Fire did not come down, it did not close down. Cool for who? Only Ibrahim. Salama for who? Only Ibrahim. Bardan was Salaman? Allah Ibrahim. Fakat. So the people, they can still feel the heat of the fire. They can still see the flames of the fire. For what are the people seeing? They are seeing that Ibrahim salam has been thrown into the fire. As far as they are concerned, do they, do they see success or failure? They see success. We wanted to burn Ibrahim, we burnt Ibrahim. Alayhi salam. The asbab of the dunya, what is the message, what is the lesson in this? The lesson in this is that the asbab of the dunya do not indicate success or failure. Success or failure come from my Rabb Jalla Jalaluhu. And it is person specific. The people are still seeing the same fire. But the fire which is supposed to burn Ibrahim is becomes the source of safety for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not put the fire out? If Allah had put out the fire, it would have reinforced the property of the fire to burn. Therefore, even Allah, now Allah, even Allah, if He wants the fire not to burn, He has to put out the whole fire. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show the fire has no strength. The fire has no property. The fire will burn if I tell it to burn. The water will drown if I tell it to drown. So the Qawm of, of Nuh alayhi salam is drowned. Nuh alayhi salam is saved. By what? By the same water. Which is the mawj? Which saved Nuh alayhi salam? The same mawj? Which made gharaq everybody else. This is the Qudrat of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show that this whole kainat is subject to the Creator Jalla Jalalu. 
So your shop does not feed you, your business does not feed you, your country does not provide safety for you, your parents do not provide safety for you, your friends and relatives do not provide safety for you. Safety comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your rizq comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The air you breathe comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The thoughts in your mind come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The desires in your heart come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your strength comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jalla jalalu. And therefore subject yourself only and only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jalla jalalu. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Wasjud waqtarib. This is the meaning of sajjad. Bring your entire being. Your physical being, your mental being, your spiritual being and make it subject to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jala jala. Second point, if you want to build a connection and build a friendship with anybody, you have to spend time with them. You can't build a friendship on the basis of, uh, you know, meeting once in a year or once in a month or something, no. You have to spend time with them. The more time you spend with them, the more the connection builds. And this is even more true of the one you love. Ask somebody who is in love with somebody else. They, every waking moment they want to be in the presence of that person. They don't want to go anywhere. They want to be there. Constantly. And if they are not there, then they want to be in touch somehow. You know, message, phone, WhatsApp, this, that. How come this person has not replied? Well, that's like two seconds ago. Huh? The reply doesn't come for two seconds, it's too long. Constant touch. And we want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Totally over five times for maybe 20 minutes out of 24 hours. This is spending time with somebody. You want to build a connection with Allah, you have to spend time with Allah. We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in our lives 24-7. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying consciously with the desire to please Allah, to connect with Allah, be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the finest way to do that is through salah. And not the faraid, not the first salah. The first salah is the, are the boundary conditions through nafil salah. And in nafil salah, the best time and the best place is tahajjud. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Alayhi wa sallam. One, of the, one of the earliest of the revelation was Surah Al-Muzzamid. After the five, five ayat of uh, Surah Al-Iqra, there is a difference of opinion whether it was Surah Al-Muzzamid or Muddathir. Wallah ala, maybe it was Surah Al-Muzzamid. And Sayyid Aisha Siddiq radiallahu anha in the Azbab Nuzul of, this, of the Surah, she says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the first 19 ayat. And then he did not reveal the 20th ayat for one year. The 20th ayat, in the Rabbah Kayalam Takumu, came after 12 months. So she said that for 12 months the Sahaba and Rasulullah prayed Tahajjud as if it was Fard. And for the Prophet it was Fard anyway. So they were praying Tahajjud as if it was Fard 12 or 13 years before the Fard Salah became Fard. When the tahajjud was being prayed, there was no first salah. There was no fajr, zohar, asar and so on. That came only in the 12th or 13th year of revelation. This came in the first year, which means that there was a period of 11 or 12 years before the first salah even came. So Allah specifically mentioned tahajjud. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ya ayyuhal muzzammilu qumil layla illa qalila. How long to stand? Layl. We pray one, one hour of Qiyam and we call it Qiyamul Layl. Inshallah may Allah give us the Ajr for Qiyamul Layl but please don't fool yourself. Qiyamul Layl is Qiyam in the whole Layl. Not one hour. Ya ayyuhal muzzammilu qumil layla illa qalila Nisfahu wa min qus minhu qalila Awzid alayhi wa rattilil qur'ana tartila What is to be done? Recite the kalam. Recite the kalam. 
those of my so so many mashallah uh, huffaz here sitting here remember what does the what does your ustad do when you go and sit in front of the ustad to kya bolte hain bole sabak sunao kya yaad kiya kal ka sunao bolte hain ki nahi bolte okay what is your door recite what did you learn yesterday recite when you are doing hips the ustad wants to listen to you so recite recite what is allah saying ratil quran tartila sikai read read who is the ustad the one whose kalam it is who is the student the one who received this kalam sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya ayyuhal muzammil qum al-layla illa qalila nisfahu wa winqus minhu qalila أو زد عليه ورتل القرآن ترتيلا إنا سنلقي عليك قولا ثقيلا why why must you do this because you have to charge your batteries because you have to connect because you have be, you are going to be given a very difficult job very heavy word is going to be sent on you prepare yourself for that internal strength why must i lift all these weights why must i pump iron why must i build muscles because you are now going into battle you are going to fight you are going to fight kufr and you are going to fight shirk you are going to lift a huge amount of weight and you can't do that unless you have muscles build the muscles which is where are the spiritual muscles what does our ruh look like it is the mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala that he kept our ruh in the ghaib you cannot see the roof of somebody if our roof was visible how would it look maybe it would look like somebody in the last stages on a ventilator in a hospital or something yeah? can't move can't move and is completely desiccated there's no dam nothing in it because we don't feed the roof we don't exercise the roof we don't do anything to the roof it's there allah is saying no build it إنا سنلقي عليك قولا ثقيلا إن ناشية الليل هي شد وطعم وأقوى مقيلا الله says yes we know it is difficult we know it is difficult to get up in the middle of the night yeah, imagine cold nights towards the first that's the sweetest part of the sleep the last third of the night is the nicest part of the sleep you really want to sleep even if you don't have heating in a cold place or you know the, the, by, by now the the bed has got some body heat from you and you nicely covered up and so on and you're wrapped up last thing in the world you want to do is to get up allah says it's difficult you know but this is the best time for discipline and for understanding the kalam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is the reward of this what did allah say تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون فلا تعلم نفس ما اخفي لهم من قرة عين جزاء بما كانوا يعملون هل اس دي ار ذا بيبل هو جيت اب ان ذا نايت دي ار ذا بيبل هو جيت اب فروم ذا سايدز and they stand before before their rab jalla jalaluhu bain al khawf wa tam'a between khawf of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my rab pleased with me have i angered my rab jalla jalaluhu and tam'a my rab is ghafur rahim my rab is rahman rahim between fear and hope is the position of the muslim a sahabi young sahabi was dying they called nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is ya rasulullah so and so is dying please come nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam went there this person was lying on the bed nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him what is your condition he said ya 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 rasulullah i am afraid that allah will give me punishment i am afraid for the fire for myself and i am hopeful that my rabb will forgive me and i ask allah for jannah nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said what you fear your rabb will protect you from what you hope your rabb will give you bain al khawf wa tam is the position of the muslim and allah said what Allah said and if they see if they know the reward fala ta'la wa nafsu ma ukhfiya lahum min qurrati ayun the reward that we have hidden for them we have kept it makhfi 
If they knew what that reward was, it would, they would be delighted. It would be the Quratul Ayn, it would be the coolness of their eyes. For doing what? For standing in the night. Spend time with your Rabb. Time in Khilwat. Time by yourself, where there's nobody, where you recite the kalam of your Rabb, Jalla Jalaluhu, with the awareness that he is listening. I mentioned his story so many times of uh, Imam Hassan al-Basri, Rahmatullahi, and his tahajjud. Huh? Hassan al-Basri, Rahmatullahi, stands up for tahajjud. And before he makes the niyyah, before he starts the salah, he says, Ya Rabbal Alameen. The whole world is sleeping. Even the stars have gone to sleep. The stars have set in the last part of the night. He said, there are only two who are awake. You on your rush and me here. This is the connection. How do you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Talking to Allah. Talk to Allah man. I've said this so many times. Talk to Allah. Let this conversation go on continuously in your mind. Yalla this, yalla that, yalla that, yalla I want this, yalla why this, how this, what? Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows what's in your heart. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says only two are awake. You on your rush and me here. And then Hassan al-Basri stands for Salah. Allahu Akbar. Reciting the kalam of Allah with the complete awareness that I'm standing in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalalu. That I'm reciting my, this kalam and my Rabb Jalla Jalalu who is hearing me, listening to me real time. And when I'm reciting his kalam and I'm doing his dhikr, what did he say? Fadkuruni askurkum washkuru li wala takfuru. He says, you make my zikr, I will make your zikr. You remember me, I will remember you. Have this istihzar, my Rabb Jalla Jalaluhu is taking my name on his arsh. My name. My name. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. Surah Al-Kabut, Allah says, wala dhikrullahi akbar. The zikr of Allah is the best zikr, meaning Allah mentioning you is Akbar, is the best zikr and better than you mentioning Allah. In one hadith, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, when my slave remembers me within himself, I remember him within myself. When my slave remembers me in company of people, I remember him in the company that I keep with the muqarrabun of the malaika. I have this istihzar. That I am taking the name of Allah, that I am glorifying my Rabb Jalla Jalalu, and my Rabb Jalla Jalalu is taking my name on his arsh. Hmm? Stand in touch. And then you recite the kalam of Allah, recite the kalam of Allah with complete understanding of what you are saying. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. In whose name? In the name of Allah, Jalla Jalalu, who is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Complete understanding of that. Until that ayah comes inside you, and this is the meaning of Zikr wal Fikr. Alladina yazkurun Allah qiyamun wa qudun wa la junubin wa yatafakkarun. Zikr and Fikr is to do the Zikr and then reflect on the Zikr. What did I just say? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين. Don't go to the next ayah until this ayah has sunk inside you completely. الحمد لله رب العالمين. Stay with that. Stay with that until the ayah completely sinks into you. And if you find that it is now coming time for fajr, then read the surah, complete your salah. But don't go to the next ayah. Until this one completely permeates every cell of your body. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. What is this? What is Alhamdulillah? What is Alhamdulillah? Ibn Kathir Rahmatullah writes in the tafsir hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah. 
where he said that Allah, the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there was a man who praised Allah subhanahu wa taala in this Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. He praised and he said, "Rabbi lak alhamdu kama yam bagi li jalali wajhi ka wazi mi sultanik." He said, "Oh my Rabb, lak alhamd, kullu hamda lak, lak alhamd. How much? Kam kama yam bagi li jalali wajhi." As much and as glorious as the glory of your magnificent countenance, in keeping with the greatness and glory of your face, wa azimi sultanik. How much? In keeping with the magnificence of your entire kingdom, all that you created, all that I know, and all that I do not know, which exceeds all that I know many many times. ربلك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك. See the beauty of this. Allah gives the words. We ask Allah give us the words which you want to hear, Ya Rab. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Quran and Kadibin, the the angels writing this thing, they got confused. They said we have never heard these words before. How much reward to write? So they go to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Jalla Jalla Wa Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows what the slave has said. Allah knows what the slave is going to say even before the slave knows what he is going to say. But as I mentioned, this is to in favor of the slave to establish the hujjat in favor of the slave. The the angel Malaika go to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They say, Ya Rabbal Alamin, your slave has today praised you in words which we have never heard before. We do not know what reward to put for this. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, What did he say? They say he said, "Rabbi lak alhamdu kama yam bagi li jalali wajhi ka wazi mi sultanik." Mau my Rabb, all praise to you, all thanks to you in keeping with the glory and magnificence of your countenance and keeping with the glory and magnificence of your kingdom. What reward should we write? What did Allah say? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Write the words of my slave as he said them." No change. Write the words of my slave as he said them, and I will reward him. I will reward him in keeping with the glory and magnificence of my face, and I will reward him in keeping with the glory and magnificence of my kingdom. What is that reward? What is that reward? This Surah Al-Fatihah, which we recite in every rakat of every salat. We haven't even gone behind beyond one word of this surah. This is the meaning of istihzar afil. This is the meaning of being close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is the meaning of spending time with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We haven't even gone behind beyond Alhamdulillah khalas. Spend time with Allah. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم. I've said this many times before. His thought came to my mind. Why are Rahman and Rahim? Allah is introducing Himself, right? Allah does not have ninety-nine names. Please don't say this. Allah has told us about ninety-nine names. How many names Allah has? Allah knows. Allah knows as many as He wishes, but we know 99 because Allah told us 99. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala could have introduced Himself using any of those or any new ones that He wanted to use for Himself, but Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala picked these two. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. What is Rahman? Rahman is the peak of Rahman, the ultimate height of Rahman. Jawan is the ultimate height of hunger. Very, very hungry. Akshar, very thirsty. Nawabban, extremely angry. But what is the problem with the peak of anything? Doesn't stay for a long time. How long will you be jawan until you eat the first samosa? Then the peak comes down. <coughs> You're still hungry, but not that hungry. How long will you be achan 
until the first gulp of water after that comes down so peak comes down so what does allah say ar rahman the rahim what is rahim the same was as jameel kareem beautiful you don't wake up suddenly one morning and find my beauty is gone no it changes the nature of the beauty changes but if you are beautiful you remain beautiful kareem izza unless you do something stupid otherwise if people like you and they respect you and they love you and so on that will remain it don't it doesn't disappear so ar rahman ar rahim is the peak of rahma which never comes down always at the peak this is the shaan of my rab jalla jalalahu huwa allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu then what did allah say ar rahman ar rahim alim al ghayb wa shahada huwa ar rahman ar rahim alim al ghayb wa shahada huwa ar rahman ar rahim he is aware of whatever is happening he is not rahman ar rahim without knowing what is going on and then suddenly he discovers that these people are doing all these sins no no no, no more rahman ar rahim now muntaqim and aziz and jabbar and mutakabbir no allah is aware of all this عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم. That does not change. Why is he saying Ar Rahman Ar Rahim in Surah Al Fatiha? Because the next ayah, Malik Yawm Al Din. Put yourself on the day of judgment. Where do you want to put yourself on the day of judgment? Malik Yawm Al Din. Where do you want to put yourself in the day? May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala put us where in the best place on the day of judgment. And what is the best place? The best place is the place that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked for. Allahumma adillani taht arshuk. Yawm la adilla illa adiluk. He said, Oh Allah, give me the shade of your arsh. Shade me under the shade of your arsh, because on the day there will be no shade except your shade. So where do you want us to? Where do we? Where do we want Allah to put us? Under the arsh, arshilati, under His arsh. And I'm making this dua for you and myself, sitting in His house in Etikaf, and with the respect due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, saying, "Ya Allah, it is your right to fulfill our dua because we are your guests." we are lying on your on on the on the doorstep of your house you cannot send us away without accepting this dua and it is my yakin inshallah mustafa that if allah did not want to accept this dua he would not have given me the thought now to make this dua <coughs> so inshallah mustafa we ask allah subhanahu wa taala oh allah gather us together under the shade of your arch on the day when there will be no shade except your shade and the companions on under, under that arsh will be muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the anbiya and the shuhada and the salihin hasuna ulaika rafiqa ar rahman ar rahim then reflect on why is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying ar rahman ar rahim before he says malik yawm al din because if the slave is reciting the surah and he is thinking about the 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 the, the uh, howl and the haybat and the fear and the terror of the day of judgment and he knows that i am going to go before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is me no one knows me better than i know myself no one knows me better than i know myself and i know that illa ma sha allah that except for the rahma of my rab and except for the forgiveness of my rab you are looking at a piece of the fire of the fuel of the hell fire with this understanding when i go before my rab what will i what will i be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying no ar rahman ar rahim you will come before me wa liqauka haq the meeting with you allah is is haq You will come before with, before me, but remember, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. I am Rahman Ar Rahim. 
So the slave is being told, come, remember the day of judgment and you will come before me. But remember that I am Rahman or Rahim. And what is the what is the nature of Rahma? Please understand this and invoke Allah and ask Allah for these things. The nature of Rahma is to do good in exchange for bad. Not good in exchange for good. The good in exchange for good is Adal, is justice. Good in exchange for bad is mercy. Where is the mercy on somebody who is doing good for you? Mercy is on somebody who is doing bad. So I ask my Rabb Jalla Jalla, oh, Yalla, this is your mercy. Your mercy is not complete if you do not forgive me. You have to forgive me, not for me, for you. To establish your mercy. If you punish me, this is your Adal, I have no complaint. Yeah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in one race, there was a man and on the day of judgment he is the, the sentence is pronounced and the sentence is go to Jahannam and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said people when they are sentenced they will be dragged to Jahannam this man when he says go to Jahannam he starts running he starts running towards Jahannam so they call him back come here why are you running? Why are you running? The man says, I never obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever in my whole life. Now I am before Allah. Now my Rabb tells me, go to Jahannam, I am running. Let me obey at least once. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, come, go there. Go to Jahannam. Kalas. This is mercy. This is mercy. What is mercy? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will call a slave of his. And he will remind the slave of the sins that he committed. And he will say, Fulan bin Fulan, you did this on this day. And the slave will say, yes, Ya Rabbul Alameen. How is he going to deny Allah? Then Allah will say, on the other day you did this and this. And he will say, yes, Ya Rabbul Alameen. And on such and such a day you did this. Yes, Ya Rabbul Alameen. On the other day you were supposed to do this, but you did not do it. Yes, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Sin after sin after sin after sin after sin. Allah will remind him. And the slave will fa'tarafi badan bihim. He will accept his sins. And then the slave will say, Ya Rabbul Alameen, I did all of this. I do not deny. I did all of this. But in the world, you covered it. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. I was doing all these sins, but among, in, front of the, in, in front of the people, with the people, I was somebody people respected. I was somebody people loved. Why? Because you put the love in their hearts. You put the respect in their hearts. I know I'm not worthy of that. I know this, my Rab knows this. But he covered. Slave will say, Arab al in this life you covered me. You did not humiliate me. You did not allow my sister to be sold in the marketplace. You did not allow my sins to be shown to people. So people respected me and people loved me. He will say, Ya Rabbul Alameen, but today, on the day of judgment, everybody is here. Everybody is here. My parents are here, my children are here, my wife is here, and so everybody is here. My asatis are my, my teachers are here, my students are here. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is here. And in front of all these people now, I have been humiliated. Because they are listening to this conversation. In this dunya you never humiliated me. But here before everybody. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say, Hold on. Allah will say, turn around. Look. And he says the slave will turn around. And what does he see? He sees a curtain. He sees a curtain between him and the people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, in the dunya I covered you. And I covered you here. This is only between you and me. Nobody is seeing this conversation. Nobody is hearing this, listening to this conversation. It's only between you and me. Now I forgive you, go to Jannah. 
go to Jannah. Let the people continue to think that so and so was such a good man in this dunya. We knew he was going to Jannah. And Allah gave him Jannah. Let them think. Let them think. That is why Imam Shafir Abdullah may Allah fill his khabar with door and raise his darajat. He said, when somebody praises you, know that they are praising the cover which Allah put over you. They are not praising you. They are praising the cover which Allah put over you. This is my Rabb Jalla Jalla. This is mercy. This is Rahmah. Adal is good for good, bad for bad. Adal is punishment for evil. Mercy is forgiveness for evil. How did Allah introduce himself? Ghafir is dham. Qabil is I am the one who forgives sins. I am the one who accepts tawbah. And therefore the next step to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we spend time with Allah and then what do we do? We make tawbah. Starting now, let us make tawbah right now. We make tawbah. How much tawbah? As much as you can. For two reasons. Firstly, there is no end to our sinning. So there should be no end to our tawbah. Rasulullah himself said, I make istighfar 75 times a day. And some of the sahaba said, we counted 100. So what about us? How much tawbah? As much tawbah as we can. One reason. Second reason is, tawbah and dua is ibadah. Is ibadah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ad-Dua huwa ibadah. And he said, Ad-Dua hu mukhul ibadah. Another, another narration. So, Dua is ibadah. Tawbah is Dua. So, we're making Dua. So, it's ibadah by itself. Plus, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's anger is cooled by Tawbah. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُ رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا He says, make Tawbah to your Rabb. Make istighfar to your Rabb. Istighfar and Tawbah are two different words. Both are related. Istighfar is to apologize. Is to ask for forgiveness. And Tawbah is to turn around. So Tawbah is the action of Istighfar. The action that Istighfar produces is Tawbah. There is no Istighfar if there is no Tawbah. Meaning yeah, you, are, you are seeking forgiveness from Allah and then you do the same thing again. No, this is not Tawbah. Where is Tawbah? Tawbah is to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, ya Allah, I, I apologize to you, I am sorry for what I am doing, means what? Means I will never do this again. So the next step is, istighfar wal tawbah. And as far as that is concerned, my brothers and sisters, what is that sign of this istighfar and tawbah? Is to avoid the doubtful. Do everything which Allah has ordered, Leave everything which Allah has prohibited and avoid that which is in between. Al halal ubayyin wa haram ubayyin wa bayramuma mushtabihat. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the halal is clear and the haram is clear. So take the halal, leave the haram and the mushtabihat, the doubtful things. He said leave the doubtful for that which is not doubtful. What is the definition of taqwa? Taqwa is to leave the doubtful. Leaving haram is not taqwa. Leaving haram is, has to be done. That's, there's no choice in the matter. You know it is haram, don't do it. It's simple. But doubtful. Should I do this? Should I not do this? Somebody asked me a question yesterday. I know working in an interest-based organization, working in a commercial bank, I know this is haram. But supposing I am developing an IT program for, the, for banking, is this halal? So I said, the, the one who caused you to have a heart which is still alive enough to ask this question, ask yourself, why did this question come in your heart? And don't abuse your heart. And that's the final point I want to say before I close. Listen to your heart. How do you connect with Allah? Listen to your heart. And what do I mean by that? I mean that in our hearts, Unless we have completely destroyed our hearts, and inshallah we have not come to that stage. There is a voice which will speak to us. Anytime that you are going to do something which is wrong, 
There is something in your heart which will tell you, which will have a doubt, which will put a question mark, which will, uh, some light will blink to say, uh -uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hey, I should not do this. Listen to that. Don't ignore it. Do not ignore it. That voice will always speak very softly. That voice will not speak loudly. And if you ignore it, it will fall silent. And you are on the path to Jahannam. <clears throat> Don't ignore that voice. You know that some, you, Alhamdulillah, all of us, we know what is right and we know what is wrong. But there are also temptations. There's laziness. But when we go towards that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this voice and Allah, that voice will speak to us and say, don't, hold on, don't do that. I'm about to say something to somebody, say, no, no, don't tell this story. It's a nice story, everyone is going to laugh, but it is ghibat. It's a nice kind of joke, but it is not so nice because it is ghibat. This thing which you are saying, you are hiding some facts here, this is a lie, speak the truth. You're selling something, you're not telling the truth, tell the truth. Don't hide the fact. You want to go and do this thing, you want to earn in this way, you want to eat this. There's a doubt in this food, don't touch it. 99% of the time, when we go fatwa shopping, believe me, you are going on the path to Jahannam. I'm not talking about an issue where you really do not know the answer and therefore you go and ask for a fatwa. Most of us ask for fatwa not because we don't know the answer, but because we don't like that answer. So you want to find some compliant mufti somewhere who gives you an answer which you like. Believe me, on the day of judgment, you and that mufti will stand together before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that fatwa will not save you. Please, please, don't be under this foolish impression that this fatwa is going to change you. It is going to save you. It won't save you. People say, no, no, unki zimmedari. Kaisa rati unki zimmedari? If, some, if you bring a bottle of poison to somebody and say, is this poisonous? And he says, no problem, drink it. It's not poison. Will you die or you won't die? Will you die? Then, your action, you are responsible. So you've got some income and this income now has 10% haram, 20% haram and you go to the mufti and mufti says up to 35% it is fine. Huh? May Allah forgive us the actual fatawa like this, I am not joking. Up to 35% it is fine. You ask the mufti, where did you get this 35% from? So 35% is fine. So you have, you, now you have this income which is 35% haram. And 65% hara. Please listen to the voice in your heart. Otherwise you will be headed in the wrong direction. So how to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the first one? Huh? Sajda. Physical sajda, mental sajda, spiritual sajda. Entire life in sujood. Number two? Yes. Spend time with Allah. Tilawatul Quran. Think. Let it sink inside. Tahajjud is the time to do it. And third one, listen to your heart. And that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned this in the Hadith. He said, the best mufti is your heart. <coughs> Whose heart? Heart of the believer. Heart of the muttaqi, heart of the one who really wants, who genuinely wants to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, please understand this. If you want to make friends with somebody, you've got to spend time with them, which means if you are spending, if I'm spending time with Hamza, then I'm not spending time with somebody else, naturally. You can't be in 20 places simultaneously. If I want to spend time with my, my brother and my dearest and oldest friend here, Babi, then I have to spend time with him, which means that other people, I can't spend time with them. Same thing applies. You want to spend time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to reevaluate your friends list. You have to reevaluate the places you go to. You have to reevaluate the kind of company you keep. 
You cannot be in this place and that place and that place, or haram place or halal place together. No, it doesn't work like that. You want to spend time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be prepared to change your friends list. Get rid of all those friends who take you away from Allah. Get rid of all those activities which take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you find yourself nitpicking and if you find yourself saying, you know, but after all I'm going to this club only for this reason, this is a sign of the lack of taqwa, nothing else. You are finding a reason to do haram. Nothing else. You want to spend time with Allah? Clean up your act. Clean up your act. Get rid of all trash. Focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay with those friends who take you closer to Allah. Who remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us the, the condition. He said, who is a good friend? A good friend is one who if you look at him, you remember Allah. When he speaks, you remember your akhirah. And when you are in his company, you learn something new. Well, what a beautiful uh, example. And who says you don't have fun like this? You have a lot of fun. The best fun in the world is by learning new things. So knowledgeable people who are muttaqun and who are Ahlullah, who are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You spend time with them, you get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get the connection with Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalalu to be pleased with you and never to be displeased. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather you under the shade of his arsh on the day when there will be no shade except his shade. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you the company of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. sallam. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you a beautiful life. <coughs> Hayat and Tayyibah in this world and when the time of your death comes I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant you a death that other people will look at and say I wish I had died like this. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you in a state when he is pleased with you and to take you in a state when he is pleased with you and to receive you in a state when he is pleased with you and then to resurrect you in a state when he is pleased with you and to give you the company of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment and grant and draw right and decree in your qadr that you get the, the water of Hawd al kawthar by from the Mubarak hand of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to write and decree in your qadr that you go with Rasulullah sallallahu behind him across the sirat into Jannatul Firdaus with Arabi Ghairi Hisab and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write this in your qadr for all your mutaliqeen, for all your children coming generations and for all those of yours who have passed away and already gone before us into the Alam al-Barzakh. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill their qubur with nur. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive their sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove all their difficulties we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather all of you and all of them, all of us who love each other on the day of judgment together and together in Jannatul Firdaus ala bi ghayri hisab wa sallallahu ala nabiyil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahiween wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin